The world is too large for explorers to map and too old for academics to record. Expeditions return with tales of places bizarre, wondrous, and horrific. You are an explorer, braving the unknown in search of riches, knowledge, power, or something else. Most of all, you seek arcana, strange devices holding unnatural powers. They range from a humble piece of jewelry to vast sculptures. There are many religious and scientific theories around their existence, but most settle somewhere in between. Citizens flock to Bastion. Its vast industries provide dangerous but dependable work, and its docks send guns, chemicals, and newspapers to distant neighbors. Beneath the city, the underground stretches just as far. Sewers twist into tunnels, hiding ancient caves and forgotten vaults. Fallen cities are adorned with statues of star beings. Cultists manifest their fervor into reality. Belligerent unions prepare for a cosmic invasion. Familiar landscapes are overrun by strange weeds. Corrosive mists creep in from the sea and jet black mountains watch from the horizon. This odd world has been affected by beings stranger than we can imagine. Today, we're gonna to do something a little different, but it's really not different for this channel. Those of you who come to the channel on a regular basis know I don't do any fantasy on this channel when it comes to tabletop RPGs. Specifically, I cover non-fantasy alternative genre tabletop RPGs. Now, if you're new to the channel and you wanna know, well, why is that the case? Then I got a couple of videos that you can go and watch and you can listen to the explanation there. But even though this might be something expected for those of you who are regulars, it's still a little different because the tabletop RPG I'm covering is different. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Into the Odd. Now this is a kind of period tabletop RPG set in the late 18th to mid 19th century during the Industrial Revolution. However, it's not a historical tabletop RPG. It's just, that's the parallel setting because Into the Odd is very odd. And we're going to see that as I introduce you. Into the Odd was created by Chris McDowell and the art was by Johan Noor. It is a rules light tabletop RPG, though I like to call it more like rules brief because there seems to be a whole lot of little rules, but they're explained very quickly. Still rules light in that regard. Not that there's not enough rules, there are plenty. It's just that they're very quick in how they explain them. The crux of Into the Odd is that the PCs are always finding themselves going on what's called expeditions. The way that they've kind of set it up, it was kind of like a dungeon crawl kind of thing. And if that's the way you want to do it, you can. But they have it to where, oh, you can expand and have a very interesting and robust world if you're willing to work a little bit on it. And we'll get into that in one second. But first, let's take a look at character creation. Character creation in Into the Odd is extremely simple, y'all. We're talking about you can actually sit down and create your character within five minutes. This is not hyperbole. I created my character and I thought maybe I was missing something because I was like, this is, this is it. And that's it. You only have three attributes that you will use throughout the game. You have your strength, your dexterity, and your willpower. It's very reminiscent 
of the three tiered attribute system of the cipher system. But that's where the similarity stops because <laughs> the system itself is quite different. Now, on top of your attributes and figuring them out, you also have to figure out your hit points and you have some equipment that you can add and that's it. Now to figure out your attributes, you roll 3d6 and you roll it three times, you put them wherever you want, that's the end of that. To figure out your hit points, you roll 1d6, put it where hit points is, that's the end of that. Now, when it comes to your equipment, it's a little bit different. You have to compare your highest attribute and your hit points. On the table, go down wherever your hit points that you have, and then hit your highest attribute number. And that is what's called your starting package. That's the equipment you will have on top of some basic stuff that everyone has, like mapping equipment, camping stuff, all the rest of that. And then that's it. That is the end of your character and you are ready to go. That's why I say you might want to wait for the in-depth stuff until you actually get into the game because it can get very interesting from here. How you do things in Into the Odd is simple enough. What you do is you choose whatever attribute that you're going to use. Let's say, for example, my character that I created. Her name is Honor Pacheco. We're going to use her as the example. And her abilities are Strength 8, Dexterity 13, and her Willpower of 12. And let's say, for example, that she wanted to climb up a wall or a fence that they needed to get over. So everybody has to make a basic dexterity roll. How you do it is number one, it's actually called a save and pretty much everything is called a save. You make a dexterity save by rolling 1d20 and you have to roll under whatever your attribute is. So in the case of Honor, I would roll her dexterity. And if I get under 13 or equal to, then I have succeeded in climbing that wall. That is how you do basically just about everything when it comes to actions like that. Combat is a little bit different than it is to complete an action. Uh, no initiative is thrown because it automatically makes it so that the player characters will go first. But how you actually attack and do things is pretty different. First, you look at the weapon that you're using and you look at the die as far as the damage that that weapon does. Let's say, for example, Honor has a long axe and she has a die eight for that long axe. Now, if she was going to attack something, she would roll a die eight. She would see how much damage that she potentially is going to cause in this round. Then you would subtract the armor of whatever is being attacked. And if it goes to zero, then it doesn't take any damage. If there's something left over, it takes some damage. Now, let's say you take all of its hit points down to zero. It doesn't mean that it's dead, just mean that it's wounded. Ah, then it will go to the strength. Now, if you take all of the strength down, then it means that it's dead. Hasta la vista, baby. And that includes your character. Your character will be dead if that happens to them also. But since it's so easy to make up a character, really dying in this game is <laughs> not that big of a deal. Unless, of course, you've had a character for a long time. Combat that way is really quick and can be really fun in a narrative sense. After a successful expedition, if you've brought back something like some arcana or a secret, or if you've discovered something else when you can come back with a good story, and the characters can go ahead and get experience. Now, how you gain experience is, I think, rather cool. 
first is that you always get 1d6 of hit points so you just roll that and add that to your sheet but in terms of your ability you roll 1d20 for each ability and if you roll higher than your ability you'll get to add one point to that ability so your weaker abilities have the chance of becoming stronger faster than your stronger abilities and it also will allow those people who might be a little bit weaker in the group to catch up and get the experience that they need to be on par with everybody else in the group now i mentioned in the beginning introduction there were two main places the city called bastion which is where all the characters are going to be kind of headquartered and then the underground the strange network that runs underneath the city but there are other places outside of that that you can expand upon in into the odd one is the deep country which is that's the rural area that's the place where you want to go when you want to go outside of the city and you don't want to get too creepy down in the underground then there's two special places. One is called the Polar Ocean, and the other is called the Golden Land, which many people don't think exists, and it's just a myth. But this is into the odd, and it just could be that they do exist, and it's something beyond even the PC's wildest imagination, if you can go there with yours. Now, one of the cool things in terms of expanding the world or your world of Into the Odd is the Oddpendium. And here are just a whole bunch of tables where you can answer certain questions either during a session or before a session to use it to kind of build your specific Into the Odd world. And it can spark some ideas as well as you're playing or just rolling these things up to add those strange things that this world may have. This is where you can really have a lot of fun. As a GM, even as a player, you can have a lot of fun with this. Into the Odd is published by Free League Publishing. And yes, I know, I do a lot of videos on Free League Publishing games, but they treat me right, man. Between Free League Publishing, Money Cook Games, and there are a couple other indie game companies who have really started to send me some stuff as well. So, hey, you start getting me some good games and I will cover them as soon as I possibly can on the channel. So, it is what it is. I still got stuff to cover from Free League Publishing, believe it or not. They sent me a whole bunch of stuff. I have almost every game they have on their website. I'm not lying. So, I'm <laughs> so uh, I am going to cover it eventually. But as I'm looking through into the eye, I'm going, man, I'm itching to play this game for real. Uh, again, it's not about rules light for me, really. It's about whether the concept is interesting enough to draw me in to want to create a story with other people. That's really what it's about. Now, the rules themselves have to make it comfortable to create that story. Rules light or rules medium or rules heavy, it has to make it comfortable to create that story or the particular story that we want to create within that genre and in that world. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. Got any value out of this video, folks? Then you can go ahead and I'll crush your like button. Also, if you want to get a copy of Into the Odd, that's down in the description below. There's a link of a couple different versions of it. Go ahead and click on that and go grab that. And like I said, 172 pages in the PDF. It, it will be a lot of fun. You could be up and running that game easily within a half an hour. Easy. Now, if you want to stick around, and hang out with us here at the RPG Elites Tribe, then you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I try to come out with videos every Tuesday and Friday, God willing. Let's go to the question of the vid. Now, Into the Odd is clearly a cross-genre tabletop RPG. 
It's a little bit more cerebral. I like it. I just really, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I'm gonna play this game even if I have to play it solo. Seriously, I, I am looking forward to playing this. What other kinds of cross genre, those true cross genre where they, they don't quite fit into one category. What other games do you know that fit into that category that you might wanna get somebody hip on? If you know something, then now is the time to hit it down into the comments below and let other people know in the tribe so they can check those games out just like into the odd and that's gonna do it for me folks that's it that means that your boy has got to do his snaggle puss so exit if you have a game this week y'all happy gaming i pray it is an rpg elite session so until next time god willing your boy servant has got to say peace 5,000 leaks. Yeah, I am out.